just going to get right to it. Um, and I'll, you know, talk, talk with both of you. But Hans, there's a, a lot of information about you, you know, with your schooling and, and beyond that. But I want to know how you started with music and the bass in general, because you're, you're like, you're such a de dedicated bass ambassador. <laughs> ambassador, yeah. Ambassador, yeah. Um, wow. So we're, we're going back to the early 70s. Uh, I was a violinist and was playing uh, in high school. I was, grew up in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, in central Pennsylvania and um, uh, had done the uh, district, regional, and all-state stuff on violin. So I was a, a, a decent violinist, I can say. And uh, I, was, I liked to hang out in the music room. I liked, I liked to be around that. I joined the choir and so on. And the band director needed a bass player um, for, the, uh, for the jazz ensemble. And he was, uh, he was very witty. Uh, Dean Doherty was his name. He was a very, very smart guy. And he said, hey, Hans. You like hanging out and playing music, don't you? You like jazz? I was like, yeah, my father has a big collection of jazz. You know, there's not so much jazz violin, but there's a ton of jazz bass. Did you know that the bass is tuned just like a violin, only backwards? <laughs> and so I was like, sure, I'll give it a try. You know, yeah. so that's that's where it started. It, it wasn't a great band. I mean, we were just playing, you know, stock arrangements, Neil Hefty and, um, uh, you know, Pink Panther theme and whatever was cool back in the back in the 70s but that that's how that's how mercy, mercy 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 oh yeah <laughs> it wasn't yeah. even we weren't that cool yeah it wasn't even it wasn't even that and and so then i then the 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 bug bit me i went off to college uh and uh, uh studied a wide range of stuff um english and political science and philosophy uh, but kept monkeying around with the bass but i never thought i would be a bass player because i had studied so late mm. And, uh, but I kind of got hooked. And then that's when I um, transferred to uh, Cincinnati Conservatory where uh, Bill Grimes was teaching in the jazz area and Barry Green was teaching in the classical area. And that's where I kind of got started. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like a, a lot of people's origin story on playing bass. It's like either there was not enough bass players and so you had to forego like playing the saxophone or violin or something, or you got to, um, the first day of band class late and that's all that was left <laughs> <laughs> but part, you know part of it was back in, in those days it, you, you know it's, it's like uh, uh, going to the circus you have to be this tall to ride this ride mm -hmm. yeah and yeah there, the mini bass program and all the stuff that you know rodney slatford and carolyn emery and george vance that, that they all kind of started with stentor and none of that existed yeah. yeah yeah exactly it's like put the big kids on tuba and bass and then there you <laughs> right. go Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whenever you're watching this. Uh, my name is Jackie Allen, and I am with this gorgeous bass and this even more gorgeous -er bass player. Uh, what's his name? I don't know. Hi, this is Hans Sturm. Uh, greetings from, uh, from, from Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, uh, many thanks to, uh, to Barry Colstein and Manny Alvarez for uh, hosting this series of concerts. Uh, we're super pleased and excited to be able to present some music uh, to you and hope you enjoy uh, our little offering uh, today. Uh, what we have to play for you is called The Nebraska Project. We're going to play a, a portion of a new recording that's coming out. Uh, this uh, project actually began, the genesis was uh, some 10 years ago. We were living in Indiana and we were working for uh, young audiences, uh, going out into the schools and playing bass and voice duets for the kids. And uh, our project was to uh, perform music that had been written by artists, uh, composers, uh, who had some affiliation with the state of Indiana. The idea was we get the kids excited, hey, I'm from Indiana too, and maybe I could do this. And so we, there's a wide range of artists that came from Indiana. We had uh, standards from uh, Cole Porter and uh, pop tunes from the Jacksons, uh, country tunes from uh, Crystal, Crystal Gale. Crystal Gale. Yeah rock tune from John Cougar Mellencamp, lots of stuff. Anyway, fast forward 10 years, we're in Nebraska and thinking about doing a similar kind of thing. And as I started to dig around and read about some of the names and listen to some of the music from these artists from Nebraska, I uh, got the idea that instead of performing music that was affiliated with those artists, uh, that we would write a set of pieces 
uh, as homage to each of the artists as a little, little musical portrait. And some of these artists are quite famous uh, and need little introduction. And uh, others are names with which you probably are not familiar, uh, but you might know their music. So without further ado. Here we go. So our first artist hardly needs an introduction. We're talking about Fred Astaire from Omaha, Nebraska. He is legendary for his dancing, singing, and had a career for, of over 60 years. Here is our song called Pass the Caviar. A leap, a spin, the dance, the dance begins. A glance, a light, he'll dance all night. A slip, a slide, a silk, a silky glide. A step, a tap, a snap and clap. He'll sweep you off with flame. So debonair, paired with a taste of linger, a hint of ginger, a twist, a turn, a love, a love to yearn, a wink mid air. That's Fred Astaire. doctorate too but I feel like you don't go by doctor um, the, the, I, for some of my students they call me dr. Hans or dr. Sturm and that's fine but no normally I'm Hans okay yeah I was uh, I noticed that and I was like oh okay he's he's just Hans well my father was the egghead my, oh. my, my father was the one with you know degree from the University of Chicago in in, in ethical studies and so on and so he he was dr. Sturm Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and Jackie, I'm, well, I'm excited to see your concert together. Is it just duo for, for the Colstein concert? Yes. Oh, cool. There's nothing better than just bass and vocals, right? Yeah, or more challenging. It sounds like you do both at the same time. So. <laughs> yeah, but I'm crazy. I'm, yeah, well, there's something not right up here. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, cool. So maybe we can kind of like uh, converge, converge your stories here. So where, where did you grow up? I grew up in Wisconsin. And that's where we actually met. And I probably say because, really because of Richard Davis. Wow. I not really thought about that until now. But um, yeah, I had went to UW-Madison. Um, grew up, actually, another reason I suppose I was attracted to Hans, because uh, I grew up in a brass family, actually, and my father played uh, Dixieland tuba. Mm. So I grew up hearing, <clears throat> excuse me, like early jazz and, you know, multiple players and it was so common in, in Dixieland jazz that everyone's improvising at the same time and it was just sounds like a fun carnival. But you so, rebelled and you, you went with a string player. Yeah, yeah, I rebelled. <laughs> so yeah, I played the French horn, my dad played tuba, so I grew up hearing the bass sound. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, was studying voice at UW-Madison and was frankly more interested in the jazz area. Mm -hmm. you know, it was just creative for me and fun, so I met Richard. And then through Richard, really, or that, that part of the program, uh, started seeing Hans, you know, going in, like, who's this guy? 
coming in um, playing with the the big band and I was singing with the big band and so we we sort of started running past each other we, in that area yeah right? we, we yeah we, we we met each other then but we actually didn't get together until many years later and mm -hmm. we performed together actually voice and bass he had in introduced me to the idea of that ensemble if you will you know coupling and he introduced me to uh, the music of um, Sheila Jordan mm -hmm. so I was like, Wow, what is this stuff? So even, even actually, as a duo, we played together. Yeah, we never dated, but we played together in, in college at at some funky little clubs. Yeah, there was a, there was a club in, in in Madison called the Barber's Closet, and it was it was part of this train actually this old train station yeah. uh, that had uh, turned into bars and clubs and still had an old uh, uh, hotel, and it was uh, down downstairs and and you had to know how to get down there and there, there was actually a, a working barber down there um, but there was this um, uh, kind of closet uh, but it was a, uh, a you know it had a glass case and you could see you know old razor blades and so on it was like and there was a there was a, a razor strap on the side and you pulled the razor strap and the door opened up Oh wow! So it was like a like a speakeasy with overstuffed yeah. furniture and stuff, and so it was it was low ceiling, very intimate, a lot of frou frou cocktails, a lot of blender drinks and mm -hmm. so on, which was a drag when you're doing a duo. But uh, it was very romantic, and so we played in the corner, and, mm -hmm. and people dug yeah. it. It was fun. I actually thought there's just no way this is going to go over, just a voice and a bass. But I was shocked when we started to perform that. And I could hear it myself that your ear fills in. Mm -hmm. you know, as musicians, we kind of do anyway because we know the song. We can hear all the inner harmonies and the rhythm, but the audience seemed to hear what was missing as well. So mm. you know, and so that was a new thing for me. But I thought, wow, the audience is actually digging this. Just they, a voice it, yeah. and a bass. Yeah, they were accepting it. So you know that that won me over. <laughs> yeah, I think sometimes we underestimate the general public. Yeah. And what and what they can handle. And even if it's subliminal, you know, obviously they were enjoying it and they weren't like, oh, I need drums, I need piano. It was just, yeah, they, they got it. Are, right. Yeah. We're going to uh, next uh, play a tune dedicated uh, to a man who had, I think, the greatest name, Thurl Ravenscroft. There's a name to 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 wrap your wrap your math around. Thurl Ravenscroft. You don't know your don't know his name likely, but I'm sure you know his voice. Uh, Thurl had a very deep, profound voice. He came from Norfolk, Nebraska, just a little bit west of uh, of Omaha. Traveled uh, to California uh, to become a star, uh, to to find his fortune, and started uh, singing in a church choir to make ends meet. Uh, the choir director, so impressed with his low voice, uh, suggested that he go to the studios in uh, Los Angeles and audition as uh, to do voiceovers. And uh, he became a hit immediately and was eventually picked up by Disney. Uh, but uh, you'll know his voice, uh, if those of you of a certain age, uh, from, uh, from Tony the Tiger. They're great! And uh, then, of course, every year at, at, at Christmas time, uh, he's the one who sings, uh, You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. So uh, Thurl Ravenscroft, you, you know his voice, although uh, now you know his name. Uh, this is a, a tune we call Nevermore. Uh, named after the, uh, the the Raven from Edgar Allan Poe, it's uh, from the perspective of a little boy who's all that super tough, uh, except when he's not, when he's being kind of gentle. So here we go. Nevermore. <laughs> Pirates and kings, villains and ghosts, shiver me timbers, I'll make you a boast. Dive from the cliff, swing from the vine, I'm the best of the best in the world. Is mine, is mine. I've traveled the globe from Shanghai to Siam, taking fortunes from fools. That's just who I am Regrets I have none Except I'm aloof Except for the spider Hanging down From the roof From the roof As shadows they 
fall from the ceiling to the floor A creak on the step and a scratch on the door Moonlight through the window too bright To ignore, hear the song of the raven Nevermore Nevermore I roar like a lion, I shake my great mane When I bare my white teeth, you best believe that I reign over all survey from here round the block from Smith's apple orchard to the old river rock river rock when crossed I'm a terror no mercy I show but I can be sweet ask some people I know I'm rough and unshaven I'm strong but polite when you kiss me good night won't you please leave the light Shadows, they fall from the ceiling to the floor A step on the brick, a scratch on the door Moonlight through the window too bright To ignore hear the song of the raven Nevermore, nevermore Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ah. think about this a lot too you guys both I mean I grew up in LA so to me someone would be like oh you grew up in Wisconsin and it seems like pretty remote you know what's happening there but you had people like Richard Davis and and Hans coming through and like these cl clubs to play so did you feel like you were missing out on that bigger city experience or you know New York no, or something? And Jackie, you know Jackie's career took off I mean she she uh, left the university went to Milwaukee and was playing with Mel Ryan five nights a week at the Wyndham Hotel. Mel Ryan, of course, is the great organist and keyboard mm -hmm. player with West Montgomery. And then yeah. she moved so to I Chicago. Really, yeah, I really cut my teeth with, with him, essentially. So I'm already playing with just heavy cats. So it mm -hmm. was a much easier jump for me to go from Milwaukee to Chicago. And that just opened up a world. And, and very, very uh, welcoming. Chicago, mm -hmm. I was surprised. You know, it's like people just invited you to sit in. And they, we had a lot of... Uh, combos. I mean, it was just a city of combos. It was really easy to get to get work and, mm. and play. It, I'm not sure it's quite the same now, but it was at the time. Well, I, th I, I think it's more. I think it's more challenging with some of the venues. But I mean, Chicago. I was t talking with um, uh, with Neil Tesser about this, and uh, he was a great critic and did some of the liner notes for Jackie over the years. Uh, uh, but he was he's talking about like this this idea about a city that can actually sustain a jazz scene meaning that uh there are at least a certain core number of players who can make a living mm -hmm. uh, playing jazz and uh that's become more and more challenging but chicago that's certainly the case we found it, we're, we're in lincoln nebraska we found we're just you know we're three hours from kansas city that's the case down there um, but there are places that are you know relatively large cities that just don't have that same kind of scene or same kind of history. Yeah, no, no that, that's very true. And and uh, I think people don't realize that there's other places than New York or like big cities where th things are happening. And there's always there's always a group of musicians somewhere that are that are doing it at a, at a high level too. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think jazz musicians, you know, were innately creative, and so that goes that extends extends itself as far as trying to be to find work, be entrepreneurial, and we'll see. Uh, I, I remember that at UW Madison, it's like we people didn't offer us gigs. We yeah. Had to create them and so we didn't I didn't think twice about that it's, I just thought that's the way it is mm -hmm. I think that's what's happening now too I a lot of people you know older older musicians are like oh there's no more gigs for the younger people and it's like you you find a way you know you yeah. you make things you make things happen right yeah. one of my one of my former students has been in LA for some years now John Kibler and he's got a duo called we are the west and uh, his his uh, the guy he's working with is a duo guitar and he's the guitar sings and he plays the bass, and evidently they've got some connection with parking garages in L.A. So on at at an off hour, they will go down into the basement of a parking garage, set up a bunch of chairs and a small stage and and and, and do shows in parking garages in L.A. You know, acoustic. He's he's yeah. He's playing, yeah, R Radovan Law's old bass. That, cool. that bass was played in the Chicago Symphony Orchestra is now being played in, in parking garages in L.A. What a fun story. It's nice yeah. and cool. You don't yeah. have to worry yeah. about rain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you can park your car right there and then take out your bass. It's like the easiest load-in. Right. The easiest load-in ever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not, right? Why not? Well, in, in addition to doing... Uh, uh, pieces that were uh, inspired by uh, Nebraska artists who uh, may be known in the jazz or the popular world. Um, I also am uh, super interested in, um, in Indian stories. We have uh, three, three major Indian tribes that were here, the, the Omaha, uh, the Pawnee, and the Ponca. And uh, each of these tribes, they, uh, all Indian tribes, have, have stories. This is the way they, they carry on tradition, tell tales. Uh, uh, offer uh, ways how to be in the world, how to act, and so on. There's stories about creation, for instance, how the world came to be. Uh, there's stories about coming of age and uh, fighting off monsters and so on as you grow older. And uh, uh, then there are also uh, stories of the trickster, what to be careful of, and uh, these are the uh, very funny creatures, very funny critters who uh, play practical jokes on one another, folks you need to watch out for. And uh, so I was really attracted by a few of these stories stories, and um, uh, one of them we, uh, we uh, rewrote and put to, uh, put to music. It's from the Omaha tribe, and we call it the Tail Tale. And the Tail Tale is about uh, a coyote uh, and a monkey. Uh, now, that's a really good question. Uh, how, how did uh, uh, a Nebraska, uh, an Indian tribe uh, based in the Nebraska area uh, uh, come across a monkey? Uh, I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, this is called uh, Tail Tale. lay by the trail. Coyote told Monkey, it's dead man, and tied Monkey's hands to the tail. The horse awoke with a start and careened off down the path. Monkey was battered and bruised while Coyote cried as he laughed. Sat by the trail with a fish. Coyote drooled and schemed to bring home such a fine dish. So Monkey took Coyote down to the frozen lake, chopped a hole, and told him, Use your tail as bait. For a big bite, he told him, don't settle for a small perch. Coyote sat for a long time until he felt a large lurch. 
the ice had frozen completely, his tail stuck below. The trickster tricked the trickster, and that's how the tale tale goes. The trickster tricked the trickster, and that's how the tale tale goes. Well, I noticed, I mean, with both of you, I mean, Jackie and Hans, that um, it's like music is just music. It's not like, oh, you just play jazz or classical or something for, for both of you. So, I mean, so I'll pose this question to, to both of you. I mean, why, uh, I, why is that? I mean, ja I was listening to your music, Jackie, and, and it's, it's nice. It's like there is, you know, some things that you're like, oh, that's jazz. And then, oh, this is a little bit more folk or, or something like that. So why, why? Why do you like to do that? Um, I'm just honoring my own creativity and what comes to me. And I feel like if I can make it, if I make it my own, it feels like it's more genuine. I try, try to, that's the whole point of, to me, of being a jazz musician is trying to be a creative musician. And so however something speaks to me, if I honor that, I know it's going to be, it's going to be true. It, it, if it speaks to me, I'm going to enjoy it. And mm -hmm. perhaps someone else would enjoy it as well. Yeah, because I got the the picture. It's not like sometimes I'll hear an artist and you're kind of like, oh, they're doing this pop song because they think someone's going to like it. Or like you can kind of tell like, oh, that's not really what they want to do. But I could tell everything you, you're producing is like is you. So I appreciate that. Well, I think so. it, I'm going to oh. say it doesn't always turn out like I intend. And so that's, part of, that's part of the game too. You're oh, yeah. With a whole bunch of creative musicians. So my original intention when we begin to re to rehearse, record something, I'm thinking this way. But if I just open myself up to what everyone else offers, the end result will be different and there's a good chance it will be better. So yeah. I can only take this much credit for anything that <laughs> I've recorded. And this is this is the, the the band that's been playing with Jackie uh, has been together for uh, over 20 years. I mean, it's the same group of people. Uh, the percussionist Dane Richardson and I go back 30 years, and he studied in Ghana among the Iwi people. He studied in Matanzas, Cuba. He studied in Bahia, Brazil. And so he brings, I mean, a ryth rhythmic vocabulary that's mind-blowing and, and can move between these things and create new stuff. So that creates a whole other thing. John Mulder, uh, the guitarist, uh, can play classical, acoustic, but can also... You know, with the Paul Wertico trio, uh, for instance, Paul was Pat Metheny's drummer for many years, will just totally rip your head off with a, with <laughs> mm -hmm. a rocket screaming, distorted. He's, yeah. got a, he's got a little pedal, maybe I'm mm. giving away a trade secret, called the rat. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but when he steps on the rat, <laughs> it changes everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, then, and then pianists, we've had, uh, we've had a few. Uh, Lawrence Hobgood has played, but uh, Ben Lewis is just a marvelous uh, a marvelous musician, but I think to that to, to to your point. I mean, part of it was I think Jackie had a lesson earlier on was with 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 Eddie Higgins. Oh yeah. And with with Eddie Higgins and Richard in a recording session where yeah did a recording session and uh, I was totally steeped in Nancy Wilson at at the time. You know, it kind of started with Ella and it just <laughs> keeps morphing and who's the next person you're just gonna just yeah. devour. You know, so I was really into Nancy Wilson. And I was actually recording one of the songs she had recorded. And we finished, and I was so proud of myself. We got it together, and it was after the recording. And he pulls me aside, said, you Stop listening to her. If you want to be true to yourself, don't record any of the songs that she's recorded. And I was just, you know, crestfallen, but it only took me a few minutes to realize what he was really saying to me. If mm -hmm. you want to be your own person, you, you've got to now just assimilate all the things, but just not any one person. Just trust your own voice. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was just great to hear. And good, good that you were open to hear it. Yes. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Mm. Is that what you were referring yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what. I, but but I mean, there's there's certain tunes. I mean, uh, um, for that I can say they they didn't catch on. You know, with Jackie's recordings, but tunes that that I felt were particularly effective, that were very creative. I mean, her version of uh, Born to be Blue, um, where it's a famous Mel Torme tune, and he's, for those that don't know, you know, he, he wrote the, the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on, everybody knows that tune. But Born to be Blue is, is uh, really dark lyrics. Mm -hmm. And she just swiped out all the lyrics and just had the bass playing uh, uh, these minor tenths. Boing, boing. Right. And then she floats the melody. Some folks, well, you should sing it. I can't sing, but we're, we're born, born to be. be Some folks boing, to boing, live in clover. Boing, 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 but they are such boing, a chosen few. Boing, Right. But clover being green is something I've never seen because I oh, was like born the, to be how, blue. Yeah, I think right? how dark can you go? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, six feet under dark. Just, oh, yeah. Was, oh, yeah. And, but then, like, you know. yeah, and then, and then, and then messing with the bridge where it's just one long walk up. So mm. then we kind of get this feeling, and then the bottom drops oh, out yeah, of it yeah. again. Yeah. It's so it's having fun, you know, crushing. having fun with uh, arrangements. Like, how can you rearrange something for mm -hmm. a combo? And that was a, a, also a fun creative process for me. I think I enjoy that more than, say, scatting mm -hmm. changes. Mm -hmm. Oh, totally. Because you, especially as a vocalist, you've got I'm creating like, my own landscape. To yeah. Thing over. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I got my own bass player. player. Right. Yeah. That's kind of nice to have around the house. Right? Yeah. Either your own piano player or your own bass player. I think There's having a, a bass player there. is best. It's, yeah. It's, 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 I so got nice my to own have bass a, player. So nice to have a bass around the house. Yeah. Yeah, right. definitely like a, a Bob yeah. Duro. Right. Could, could write a right, song right, like that. Right, Bob Duro. Oh, my goodness. Or yeah. Dave, yeah. Um, Dave Frischberg. Yeah. yeah. So we would like to continue on uh, with a lovely female vocalist. Uh, we're talking about Julie Wilson, uh, also born in Omaha, Nebraska, left Nebraska for uh, London, performed uh, in Kiss Me Kate, uh, had quite a career uh, on Broadway, uh, went home, raised a family, and continued, uh, con continued back to uh, Broadway and uh, uh, read up her whole career and she became eventually known as the Queen of Cabaret. And now there is an annual, uh, what would you call it? It's, it's an award that's an, given. An award that's given to uh, young aspiring singers, cabaret artists, and it's called the Julie Wilson Award. This is our tribute to her, and it's called Sing Your Song. Sing when you're feeling hopeful Sing when you're feeling lost Sing when the song is over No matter what the cause There's nothing like a song, darling Such a beautiful song To keep your heart swinging Just keep on singing Just keep singing your song Sing when the day is sunny Sing when the night is blue Sing for your love's remembered Sing for the song is
laughing like a song, darling. Such a beautiful song to keep your heart swinging. Just keep on singing. Just keep singing your song. I think my last question is more along the lines of, of both of your passions, but Hans, I know you've, you're a past president of ISB. You're still very, very involved. Um, so what is it like to be, I, I love the base community, by the way, this, the international base community is so much fun. Um, so what, what has your experience been just being involved with ISB? Well, actually, I got to tell you, I'm president again. Okay, I thought I did see that, but I, I was like, am I mistaken? Yeah. It's the first I, time I understand it's that the that's first happened. Time. Yeah, well, we did, we, but we, uh, Barry was sort of acting president for many years, Barry Green, and then and then Jeff Bradetich was, I think, seven years, something like okay. that. And they both, this was after Gary Carr founded the organization, mm -hmm. and of course he was there for many years, and then there was sort of a year hiatus. In the, anyway, the whole history. You can read the whole history on isbworldoffice.com. Uh, I had not intended to continue on. I was, uh, yeah, my shelf life was, um, yeah, longer than a Twinkie's. I should have, I should have stepped off. <laughs> uh, so, but we had, we, we uh, Nicholas Walker had changed the way the board operated. Um, the board had operated in a in a fashion where uh, bass players who were on the board represented a. And we just got done talking about this, a certain style of music, mm -hmm. where they were a teacher or they were whatever. And uh, uh, he brought in with some consultation uh, uh, somebody to come in and talk about, okay, how does the organization work? What are best practices? And basically she said, uh, the woman who came in, I said, what are you doing? This is not a good idea. What you need to have are people that fulfill specific roles. And uh, that changes the complexion uh, completely. So that was six years ago. Mm -hmm. when, I think that's six years ago because he just, he just stepped off. So it's, it's two years president-elect when you design the convention. So this last convention was the one that the, the, I had designed two actually because we had, we had anticipated it was going to be in person and then mm -hmm. had to pivot to online. Uh, two years as president-elect doing that, two years as president running the board, and then two years as past president. So you always have kind of three people in the pipeline helping to run the organization, which I think is a very smart way to run mm -hmm. this. But when we did that, uh, when that move was made, uh, then the question was, okay, so you're sort of representing this group of people, but now what can you bring to the table in terms of a role, like marketing, development, uh, treasurer, secretary, um, you know, these uh, young basis, these are the kinds of yeah. these are the kinds of things that we're looking for now. Um, and because I have a history of running a couple of non nonprofits, working with nonprofits with the um, Madison Music Collective, which is still going since 80, 82 or 84, oh. a long, mm -hmm. long, long time, maybe it's 84, uh, and then the uh, Metal Art Music Festival here, here in Lincoln, uh, Nick asked me if I wouldn't mind going over the bylaws and then writing an operations manual, which we didn't have. Mm. And so I got into that creating these things from scratch and, and, and each time I would bring another iteration forward to the board. So there are a dozen, 15 iterations before they were approved. The bylaws are wholly writ because that's, an, that's a legal agreement with the IRS. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful that you don't define things too specifically. But the operations manual is a living document. It's how we do business and how things, how things go. And so that was evolving. So I had just gotten done doing all of that and was and we, we had to elect now before the, the outgoing president would appoint somebody to become president elect mm. in consultation with the executive board. Now the operations manual said we have to have an election and the executive board would accept nominations and so on. And so I got through all of this stuff and passed the thing and I'm bowing out and I get this phone call two weeks later. Nicholas said, you've been nominated. <laughs> and I was like, as I thought that when he called, I thought there was a problem. With the yeah, yeah. Manual. And uh, I said, oh, Nick, no. And he said, no, I want you to seriously consider this. And, and here's why. And we went into this discussion. 
And so I said, okay, if those folks who have been nominated, because this wasn't part of the operations manual, each of them wrote a, a bio because mm -hmm. the board is relatively large, 20 people. Not everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Short bio and your vision for uh, the ISB. If everybody writes that and then they, then they read that and they, they, then they vote for me, then I will accept it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. Um, so anyway, it was, a, it, it was, a, the, the convention was just, I, I have never been so stressed. Oh, this past one? Oh, oh online. and yeah. so much work. Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 The, the videos and stuff you would, I don't know what you would think, but it was, I can get on a soapbox about that, but I won't. It was, it was very challenging, but it came off exceedingly well. And I think that the next one for sure will be some kind of hybrid because we can reach people who can't travel. Oh my yeah. gosh, I love I I did one one day of it and I I thought it was seamless on my end, you know. And it, I had so much fun, you know, working with the younger the younger students. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, and that was that was on the Zoom uh, on the ISB Zoom account completely. That wasn't on the Cvent account. So uh, that you know what what uh, Wesley Thompson and Tracy Rowell did in designing that was just out of sight and and yeah. They're, they're, they're both just totally brilliant. And uh, Wesley, especially regarding the technology aspect of it. So she's taken over now as, as secretary and is going to help with the Travis Harrison um, working on the base camp and the communications between folks. So it's really, it's really quite brilliant. I, I'm, I'm very, very excited. We have a uh, representative from the PAGE panel, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Gen gender um, equity. And uh, also now we have uh, a new diversity team as well. So uh, both of those are now a, a, a part of the board, which I'm uh, super excited about so I'm, I'm I'm thrilled with the way things are going and we just had yesterday we had our, our first meeting uh, with the new board I just got to know each other a little bit and chat about how the board works and everything and this is a, a tremendous group of people I'm, I'm very excited to see the possibilities that's going to come I, I, I love this organization I mean you know I, I, and what surprised me when you speak about this the, the, the business about um, stylistic and so on I can remember a concert I may, I may have conflated a couple things, so I might not have this exactly right, but I want to say it was a duet concert with Peter Kowald and Teppo Hataao. It was a free improvisation, and I remember quite distinctly Teppo, uh, no, Peter, uh, uh, detuning his E string so he could pull it out like this away from the bass uh -huh. and bowing it so it sounded like a lion the size of a hippopotamus. It mm -hmm. was just this... <laughs> kind of sound and tempo being tempo is tapping on the bass and yeah, so yeah. on and i'm looking around and um uh, david walters is there and frank proto is there and it's like all of these cats that i would have thought would have been listening to this classical player in another room mm -hmm. playing some you know amazing amazing stuff over here but they were here in 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 this space uh, and it was just that experience of seeing these icons yeah act like the most avant-garde thing you could possibly hear that's where that's where they were yeah so anyway that was that was that was eye-opening yeah I, bass players are ear are, opening. are open ear yeah opening. Yes, exactly. yeah yeah oh that yeah that's fantastic um well, I mean, yeah, I'm so so excited for the next the next convention to see what's oh, going to be happening yes join the ISB we have now an e-membership uh, so you can get the magazine online. I think it's I think it's twenty five bucks a year. So it's oh yeah, really, I can even I can say as a non bass playing uh, musician that uh, I've had more fun at at some of these conventions because I've been to many of them performing. It's just a fantastic group of individuals. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I could never imagine attending. A, a, a vocal conference or convention <laughs> it would just be divas everywhere but there's something about so bass players yeah yeah it yeah exactly back spent, of the buzz yeah, yeah. We, we spent all our lives supporting. mostly supporting other people not in, not in the limelight i mean we do have some now that are coming up you know uh -huh. of course edgar but but you know xavier foley for instance mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've got some folks who are really doing 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 great stuff but they're still even with that super supportive oh yeah w w wanting to help each other all the time and so the hangs are uh, uh, are epic yeah it's we, so much fun to see the bass players in the limelight mm -hmm. right to move forward and now i get to be the leader i get to be the soloist i get to do all this creative stuff and you see them playing all together it 
you know, it's it's just great fun. It's the base love. That's what it is. Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. Um, well, cool. I'm going to, we'll, we'll call it there. I really appreciate you both taking the time, and I'm really looking forward to checking out your concert uh, this this week. I think it'll be happening this Wednesday, I think the 15th, if I'm not, September 15th, if I'm not mistaken, and it'll s probably stay online. Um, we don't have to give anything away. I'll, you already said it's going to be some original music and just, just bass and voice, so I'm looking forward to that. And thank you. It was so so great to meet the both of you. I hope I look forward to the day of seeing you in person. Sure. This is called uh, uh, South Side Spiced Strut. And uh, I guess you could say this, uh, uh, the, the lyric at any rate was uh, inspired by the south side of Chicago, uh, all those uh, great eateries down there. So get your spiced strut on. Uh, it's an homage to Anne, uh, Anne Ronell. Uh, those of you who are uh, uh, jazz aficionados or uh, early pop aficionados will recognize that name as being the, uh, the composer of Willow Weep for Me. And uh, um, Anne, uh, Anne grew up in Omaha, went to Radcliffe, where she studied with Walter Piston. She was uh, very interested in composition and uh, had the opportunity. I, I believe she was a, um, uh, did some work for the, the college radio station. But at any rate, she interviewed George Gershwin. And uh, he really took a, uh, took a liking to her. Uh, they, made a, they made a musical connection and corresponded uh, over the years. And she actually dedicated Willow Weep for Me uh, for Gershwin. Um, she's also known uh, for uh, working for Disney. And uh, one of the big productions that she did was uh, uh, Who's Afraid of the, uh, of the Big Bad Wolf? And so this is our, our homage to uh, Anne Ronell, South Side Spiced Strut. Uh, based uh, loosely on the on the Willow Weep for me. Gonna get you deep on a feeling. I feel your feet move on over, move on over a south side spiced strut. Spiced, 
strut, sell, side, spiced, strut. Makes me hungry for barbecue, I think. Is it dinner time yet? <laughs> I'm always hungry for barbecue. <laughs> I don't need an excuse. All right. So where we'd, like to, we'd like to finish up uh, with uh, one more original, uh, and a tribute to Neil Hefty, and you can tell us more about it. Yeah, Neil Hefty, for the jazz fans, will will, will know Neil Hefty as the, a great composer and arranger. I think uh, best known for his work with uh, uh, with Count Basie. Uh, but uh, Neil Hefty is from the small town in central Nebraska called Hastings, uh, about a couple hours um, uh, west of here in Lincoln. And uh, he left high school early, uh, went out to New Jersey, uh, started uh, playing on the, on the road there, and uh, hooked up with uh, some group, went out to California, and I, I believe he played with, the, um, uh, with Woody Herman's first band and started doing some arranging there. Uh, he loved Count Basie and uh, offered uh, to do an arrangement for him. The Count accepted, uh, loved the arrangement. It fit the Basie style, that, that Kansas City uh, blues-oriented uh, uh, sound, and uh, then Neil wrote another and another, and then in the words of, uh, of the words of the Count, that's how we became married. Uh, very sweet and funny. So, uh, of course, the, the, uh, for me, the, the biggest record is Atomic Basie. That's uh, the one record with uh, the famous record, for me at any rate, uh, with all the Neil Hefty and Count Basie arrangements. So uh, this is a, a, a tribute to Neil Hefty. Uh, we call Hipster, uh, Be Cool. You say you're cool, just don't make it so Got to be real, baby, let it flow Ditch that bad attitude and have a little empathy Don't you see? Reach out to others for you help yourself You gonna wind alone upon the shelf No one is gonna want to spend no time with you Friendship is what this world revolves around. All folks are dealing with their blues. You find that when you really reach someone, love someone, you're cool. So be the first to lend a helping hand. Pick up your horn, go on and lead the band. You be the coolest cat from here to Omaha. is what this world revolves around all folks are dealing with their blues you'll find that when you really reach someone love someone you're cool so be the first to lend a helping hand pick up your bass go on and lead the band you'll be the coolest cat from here to Omaha pick up your horn Break up the band, just be a man, you need a helping hand. You'll be the coolest cat from here to Omaha. You are a cool cat, all of you. <laughs> Thank you so much from Jackie Allen, Hans Sturm. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Manny. And uh, uh, enjoy your day or your evening. Bye-bye. <laughs>